Hello! So we have this character right here that's not quite finished, but I guess nothing ever really is, you know, we can always modify it and make it look nicer. But what I wanted to do in this video is do a little bit of cleanup. Because I was talking to someone and they're telling me about how they struggle uh, polishing their hard surface uh, meshes and ZBrush, you know, without having to go into Maya and retopologize and then just bring it back to make it look really clean and sharp. So we can definitely do that within ZBrush. And our mesh is actually relatively clean already, but you'll notice that we still have a little bit of bumpiness on the surface. You know, that's very characteristic of ZBrush. And there's nothing inherently complex about this design that doesn't allow me to to just like use a H polish and slowly polish this out or use the smooth brush. You know, I, well, you can certainly do that. And there are some situations where I think you should do that. But I actually want to teach you a slightly more advanced technique and it can be a lot of fun. So let's get started with that. Step number one, let's identify the part we want to work with. and. There's a lot of situations where you might feel like the character, your model is just way too complex. And all you have to do is simply start splitting apart some of the pieces. And you'll notice that if you just work on one tiny piece at a time, that it just becomes a lot more manageable. So in this case, I want to do the legs. And I'm thinking I'm actually going to split them into their own separate Z tool. So to do that, let me just identify which elements need to be merged. Okay, so we'll merge legs here. I have a hotkey for uh, merge down. Definitely would recommend that. Okay, let's merge these two. Perfect. So I have the legs. Now let me just copy them. Let's copy. Here's copy. And I'm going to go to a completely different Z tool and just paste them in there. Okay, let's delete this mesh. I have a hotkey for that as well. Okay, so we have our legs separate now. All we have to do is simply, let me just duplicate them to sort of keep a backup. And we don't actually need both legs right now. So let me turn off symmetry, hide one of the legs, and then delete hidden. As you can imagine, we have a hotkey for that as well. So let's now position this right here and rotate our legs so it's a little straighter. This is going to help a lot when it comes to uh, making the legs symmetrical. Something like that, I think. Perfect. Now we have some asymmetry on the leg as well. So let's just work with the symmetrical parts. So let's select this. Let's go to our mask lasso and then mask this part out. I'm just going to work on this piece for now. And I'm going to mask away everything I don't want. Whoops, let's switch back to a uh, mask pen. And keep only the piece I want to work with unmasked. And the poly paint is a little bit confusing right now because I can't tell if it's masked or poly paint. So let's disable it. Okay, so we mask all of this out. We don't need. Actually, you know, I'm getting... No, okay, let's continue. I thought I was getting ahead of myself, but not quite yet. Whew, dodge a bullet. Okay, so let's just mask out everything we don't need. And you'll see what I was talking about in a second. Now this area right here is actually not going to be visible either because there's like a, some mesh in there. So let's mask that out as well since we don't need it. Don't have to be too careful. Actually, it's all of this. Same with this top piece. I think that's good enough. So let's split masked points. Oh, wait, unhide. Split mask points, perfect. Now let's just split this leg as well, split hidden. Okay, so basically all the leg pieces are now uh, split apart. Well, most of them, in fact. Not all of them, but 
the one we needed is now separate. That's what matters. And I'm not entirely sure if I should leave this piece separate as well. Uh, you know what? Let's leave it in there for now. So here's the first thing I want to do, and that's mirror and weld. But if we hit mirror and weld right now, it's going to mirror across our uh, entire, what do you call it? I guess our canvas. I don't know. But I don't want that. I want to mirror across itself. So there's a button right here. I changed my UI, but it should still be around here. That says local symmetry. So if we just click that, and then if we mirror and weld again, we'll get our... Uh, we'll get a symmetrical piece, you know, across its own axis. Yeah, that turned out really well. You know, it, it changed a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo the symmetry. And I'm going to move this mesh over here, press Shift S. And then I'm going to rotate it, press Shift S again. And then I'm going to move forward in my history again. So after the symmetry. And I just want to compare the before and after, just to make sure we didn't lose a lot of volume after symmetrizing. You know, it turned out pretty well. Let's turn symmetry back on, recover a little bit of volume here. I think this is all fine. Don't want to spend too much time here. So control N to clear our canvas. Step number two is actually fairly basic, and it just involves cleaning up our mesh a little bit, just a little bit, you know, using smooth and H polish. And we're not gonna like take it to perfection in this stage. We're just trying to give ZBrush uh, a hand. ZBrush is gonna do most of the heavy work. Right now I'm just trying to clean it up a little bit so it's not too uneven. Don't spend too much time here. Don't worry about the these like jagged edges yet. We'll worry about those later. So the mesh is already relatively clean, like I said before. I think we could use a little bit of clay in here. Actually, H polish, just a little. Smooth. Uh, this piece. Just hoping it doesn't give me too many issues. I think that's good enough. Step number three. Switch to a paintbrush. So let's go to B, P. Here it is. And I actually want to fill the entire mesh with white poly paint just in case. So make sure it's set to white, fill object, perfect. And now if you press V, we can select the black paint. And we can start painting right away. But first things first is we don't have a lot of topology. So I'm gonna subdivide once. And I think that's enough for our purposes. And let's delete the lower subdivision just because we don't need it anymore. Okay, now one thing I don't want as well is Opacity. I want my brush to be at full strength for what we're going to do. So go to brush, tablet pressure, and turn RGB intensity all the way up. Or you can also just use the button on the side of your pen, but I'd rather turn the pressure down or all the way up. So let's set our brush to something smaller, like 11, I guess. That'll be fine. Oh, local symmetry, my bad. Okay. So now the next step is we're going to draw lines wherever we want sharp edges. And we're going to use these lines to create polygroups. And what I want you to do is simply start painting. So remember, wherever we want a sharp edge. So pretty much around every panel here, we're going to draw a line. Hmm, let's remake this one. Yeah, 
And I'm thinking I also want to keep these sharp edges in between the panels. So let's just draw those in. Okay, if you're still here, now all we have to do is go to Z plugin, polygroup it. And first, let me turn on our poly paint, our poly paint. I'm sorry, my polygroup so you can see them. And I'm going to press Control W just to make sure it's a single polygroup. It just mirrors Control W not working. Oh, it does work. Oh, there we go. Wasn't working before. Hmm. Must have had a mask or something. Okay, so we have a single polygroup, Z plugin, polygroup it from paint. And it's going to use our painted lines to create separate polygroups. So let me turn off wireframe and use a different material. There we go. So everything got split perfectly. And it's actually using separate polygroups for each side, even though they're symmetrical. So let me mirror and weld just to make sure they're the same. And I'm just going to change the color for visibility purposes. Perfect. Step number four, let's turn off our poly paint because we just don't need it right now. Oh, let's go back to white. Switch materials, okay. So our polygroups have somewhat jagged edges and we can fix that really easily using zero measure. So let's set zero measure to keep our polygroups and we're gonna set it to, it's currently at 48. Let's try 10,000. Then let's just click zero mesh and give it a second to calculate. So that's a lot better. You know, we, we have loops now that are going all the way around our polygroups, but it's still a little bit uneven. So let's zero mesh again. This time, let's just click on half. Much better. Should I do this one more time? Sure, why not? Okay, that might've been too much. So let's leave it here. And one thing we can do straight away is just increase polygroups and activate dynamic subdivision. And we almost get a clean mesh. So there's one more thing we can do. And there's a slider under deformations. You can find it somewhere here on your right. But what it does is polish by groups. So let's try it out. Let's set it to something pretty high. And you'll see it's going to polish everything and sort of sharpen the edges of our polygroups. So let's do it again. A lot better. And you can keep doing it as many times as you want, but the more times you do it, your shapes start to lose a little bit of their form. And in fact, if you uh, open this little circle right here, it's going to do it a lot stronger. And But again, you're going to really lose your shape now. So I tend to leave this little circle filled and then just do a little bit of polish by groups as I need it. So that's pretty clean. And just because we're using polish and polygroups and that kind of stuff doesn't mean you have to stop sculpting. So if you still see a little bit of a bump, you can just like smooth it out, no big deal. I'm gonna do it one more time just because I'm, I have to. Okay, there we go. So still in the same step, you'll notice that this piece right here didn't quite polish out the way we wanted it, wanted it to. I mean, it's definitely passable, but I mean, compared to this edge right here, that is super clean, I think we can still polish this one a little bit. So let's do that. And there's a very easy way. If you press W for your move tool, there's my move tool. Okay, it doesn't matter where it is. 
But if you press W and then you control click on a polygroup, it's going to mask everything out except this polygroup. So now we can go back to polish by groups and only polish this unmasked piece. So let's do just that. Let's uncheck the little circle. I like to live dangerously. Whoa, okay, that was a little too, too intense. That's good enough. No, it's too much. I can't, I can't use that one. <laughs> Perfect. And like I said before, you can still grab the H polish brush and do things manually. So don't be afraid to do that. I honestly forgot what step we're in. So I'm just going to say step five and hopefully it's the right step. So step five. We still have a, some topology we can use right here to create some interesting detail. And actually, I want to fix this a little bit. Don't want to spend too much time caught up in details, but let's fix, fix these areas a little bit because whenever you polish by groups, like I said before, you start losing some of that original shape that you had and everything smooths out. So let's fix some of these. I think that's good enough. So what I want to do now is use Z modeler to create some detail in between these panels. So basically panel cuts. So how can we do these? Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new polygroup. Let's say polygroup, polyloop. Click here, press Alt a few times until I get a color I like. I guess we'll just go with green. Perfect, and I want another polyloop right here. Which way does it go? Goes that way, okay. Oh, it's bleeding onto this area. So you know what? I'm going to isolate everything I don't need. And I'm just going to keep these inner edges. OK, so I only need these, I think. So again, poly loop here, poly loop here. I guess I don't need this one for now. <laughs> I want to poly loop here as well, so let's get rid of this one. OK. So we kind of messed this one up, so we can fix that. Oh, I want to poly loop here, but. Oh, it just flows into that one. Okay, this is not too bad. So all I have to do now is fix these little poly loops. So single poly, click on this one, press shift to borrow that poly group color. Fix that area there. Any other issues? Oh, same issue right here. I actually wanted this to go the whole way. So let's do the same. Click on the green one, press shift to borrow it. Let's go back to polygroup, polyloop, and then just isolate this. Nice. So we have a polyloop that goes all the way in between our panels. And it's not actually perfect. For example, here it does exactly what I want it to. It's a smooth loop that goes, uh, well, it's just perfectly loops around. But here it's a little weird because it goes this way and then this one goes that way. I don't think it's going to be that much of an issue, but. Mm, let's just try, see if we can fix it real quick. Stitch this here and this here. Ugh. You know what, we're just gonna leave it the way it was. 
I don't think it'll be that much of an issue, like I said. Let's inspect it. Final inspection. Oh, this is supposed to end here. So let's play group single borrow this one with shift. What can we do here? I need this to end like right there. Can I get rid of that edge? Whoa, what's up with my move? So it looks a little weird, but I I think it's gonna work just fine. Okay, so now I have creasing on this polygroup, which I don't need anymore. So let me remove that creasing. Perfect. And because we removed creasing while only this piece was isolated, we get to keep the rest of our creasing. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, if we can make this edge go down here, that would look nice. Bear with me. One second. Uh, split, I think. And now we can just delete those edges. Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted. Perfect. And finally, if we activate Z modeler, we can now extrude this new polygroup, which took us so long to make. So let's do that. Let's go to extrude polygroup island or polygroup all. They both work because it's a single polygroup and it's all connected. So let's just extrude this down. And there's one issue whenever you extrude down or inwards. I don't know if you can see this, but there's a polygroup right there, even though I extruded down. And just so you can see it, you can go to, where is it? Where's display? Display properties, double, I have it here just in case, but I wanted you to know where it is. So there's actually a leftover geometry that, you know, the one that we extrude is still here and that's gonna cause some issues. So let's just isolate it and then delete hidden to completely get rid of it. And there we go. It's a little strange, but yeah, that leftover geometry is always there when you extrude or Q mesh inwards. So gotta get rid of it. And I think this is good enough. Okay. So now let's simply subdivide. And there we have it. We have some cool panel detail and it might be a little too thick. I mean, that's up to you. You can always zero mesh to get different kind of uh, polygon density or just subdivide once to get finer topology. I think it's good enough. You know, it reads well at a distance. It's not too bad, but yeah, I would want it to be smaller. Can I actually do something about that? I think if we can press W and then control click this to isolate it. What happens if we then inflate? Ooh, oh, wait, it's not too bad. Let's actually want this whole piece. Actually, let's do this while it's subdivided so I can see. Hey, that looks pretty good. And there's some areas I'd still like to fix. And of course, because I inflated the mesh, might look a little bit weird, but I mean, the, the technique is there. You witnessed it. So I'm not too sad. This edge is barely visible there. So let me turn on my damn standard, press Alt, and then 
sculpt a little bit in there. You see, it's not too bad. It looks pretty cool, and it's it's a pretty simple technique. It takes a little bit of setup, but you get really good results. Naturally, the final step will be maybe adding some alphas or something like that. So you would just subdivide, probably not using dynamic subdivision. You would use real subdivisions, but something else you can do, also a slightly more modern technique, would be using insert meshes and live booleans. And let me demonstrate with a pack of insert meshes that I just found. It's actually a free sample of a, of a real pack that costs like $20 for a bunch of insert meshes. I don't have that, but I do have the free pack, which I guess I'll link if I can. Anyway, so here are some of the insert meshes, and I'm going to use this one. They're kind of made uh, specifically for uh, being used as booleans. So let's see. Oh, we, OK. Make sure you don't have subdivisions if you're going to use insert meshes, because it'll complain. So let's draw it. Actually, let's unisolate. OK. So let's draw it right here. That looks pretty good. Let's extract it. So extract uh, split masked. You can find that as well under subtool. If you click on this mesh right here, you'll see what it looks like. Now all we have to do is switch that subtool to subtraction, and nothing's going to happen initially. So you have to turn on live boolean, and there you go. And if this happens where your boolean seems to like fade away, that's because the main mesh has holes in it. So it's, it basically has no thickness. And the easiest way to fix that is by just going to this button right here, close holes. I mean, it's on my UI, so you'll have to find it on your own. But by closing holes, we basically solidify our mesh. And now the Boolean is going to work just fine. And the cool thing is that we can actually subdivide this mesh and the boolean independently of each other. So if let's say our insert mesh doesn't have enough topology, then we can just subdivide that and then it'll look all nice. And when you're finished, of course, you like merge everything together. And that's mostly it. Oh, one more thing. You know, if you're going to use this mesh as a high poly or, uh, you know, bake down into a normal map or almost every situation really, you kind of want to avoid these ultra sharp edges because they look cool when they're in ZBrush, but they just don't read very well at a distance and they don't catch the light as well. So an easy fix for this is let's use actual subdivision. So let's subdivide once with control D. And after that, I don't actually need my creasing anymore. So let me just delete the creasing. Yeah, and let me keep subdividing, subdivide once, and then use a little bit of real polish. There we go. And I know it doesn't look as good close up, but we're not actually going to see the mesh at this distance. Remember, this is just one part of the leg. The real distance is probably going to be something like this. So you see this smoothed out edge reads a little bit better. And like I said, it just helps catch the light. And I might have polished it out a little bit too much, but I guess that's up to you. Point is, try to avoid super sharp edges. So this was all just a test run. I don't know if I'm going to recreate this type of detail all over my model. It would have an idea. Let's just fill this with black so it looks like you can see in between the plates. Anyway, the moral of the story is there, this might not, not actually be the fastest way of cleaning something up, but that's just because I spent a lot of time creating this with Z modeler. If all you need is to just like get sharp edges then create some polygroups, use polish by groups, and you're pretty much done. You know, if you want to experiment with Z modeler afterwards, then that's up to you. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.